Hi everyone, I'm here with Jane Rafter today, our resident fitness expert on the Chrissy B Show and of JCW Fitness. And I'm preparing to do a 5K run for charity very soon. And Jane's going to be giving me some tips on how to prepare, what to do on the day and things like that. Also diet and um, breathing and stuff like that. Yeah. But also if you guys at home want to actually take up running for yourselves, not just for competition or for charity, but something that you'd like to take up. So Jane's going to be helping us out. So hi, Jane, how are you? Hi, Chrissy, I'm fine, thank <laughs> you. It's a bit windy, isn't it? It's actually a nice day for running. Yeah. We were lucky. So you're going to be giving us some tips. But how should someone start preparing because if they want to take up running? I think if you've never run before, it's really important that you do do some training. I wouldn't advise turning up for a, a, a race and running from colds you, you know you're more likely to injure yourself so do take some time to train and prepare but what you should do when you're training is have a strategy say over a period of weeks where you're building up to a particular point that you want to be at for the race mm. so it, you might not necessarily run a whole 5k say for example but you might say well i want to run um three minutes and walk one so you might start your training where you walk two minutes um, and run two minutes and then build it up to running for three and walking for one but you need to graduate that over your say like six weeks I would say. Chrissy and I are just warming up for the race we've done a 10 minute power walk with two or three short bursts of um, slow jogging just to warm up the body and I'm just going to take Chrissy through some dynamic stretches and movements now because you've got to warm up the joints and the muscles. Okay, okay so if we take the legs wide and we just go side to side. So a dynamic stretch is where you're stretching the muscles, but you're moving all the time. And really your warm up should reflect what you're going to do, the activity you're going to do. So we need to keep moving. That's lovely. Let's just do another couple. And then if you come to centre and just lift one knee and drop down into a lunge position and bring it back. We're going to lift the other knee drop into a lunge. So can you feel how that's working your thighs? Take a lunge, lift and down. Just pick up one leg and then press your hips forwards. So you have your knees quite close together and you push the hip bones forward. Can you feel a pull there in the front of the leg exactly? That's great. And we'll change legs. What I would say, Christy, is you shouldn't do these stretches cold. You should only really stretch when you've done your warm-up, when you've done your walking, a little bit of running, some dynamic movements, that's when you do your static stretches. Yeah. Perfect. That looks good. So we'll start with our power walk and the pace of this should be quite fast. So you should feel that if you had to do this for a long time, you would definitely get warm, you'd get out of breath. Um, and in fact, it's not much slower than a jog when you do your power walk. So let your arms swing and take big strides through the legs and then start to pick it up a bit because we're going to move towards going into a short run phase. Okay, so we'll start to go faster and then start to jog. And your breathing should be nice and relaxed in line with your movements. I personally like to breathe in three, two, three, in two, three, two, three. In, so you get into a rhythm that flows with your body and try and relax the shoulders as well. That looks really nice, Chris. Does that feel comfortable? Yeah, it does. Yeah, and this is a good pace and you'll find that when, we, when you start the race, a lot of people will kick off quicker than this, but this is fast enough. This is all you need to do. And if you're new to running, this might be enough for you, so you might want to break into your power. Can you see that I didn't really slow yeah. down? This is less exertive. But it's, uh, it's not much difference in speed. So, Jen, I've had some great tips there from you for running great. and preparing for a race and also if I just want to take up running in general. Now, how about footwear? Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, it's really important that you have the right shoes to run in. And you know what's interesting? It's better to have a mediocre price range new running shoe than a really old, battered, expensive really? shoe. <laughs> yeah, because sometimes, even if the shoes look good on the outside, the internal supports can wear out. I always like to wear clothes that has what they call sweat wicking fabric, which means that you don't get sweat patches because oh. then if you do slow down and start walking and you're wet, that can be really uncomfortable. Mm. So your top's right. It's that this kind of yeah. lycra yeah. is 
is comfortable and, and I do recommend that and obviously something really stretchy that's not gonna dig in mm -hmm. and and layers if you've got a top that you can tie around your waist but I would think you're better off knowing that for the first 10 minutes you might be a bit chilly but you won't be by the time okay. you get and if you are cold you're not going fast enough you need to walk <laughs> faster <laughs> or run faster you shouldn't be cold. Oh, Jane, thank you so much. That was brilliant. It's a pleasure. And Good luck, Chrissy. If you want more Chrissy. information about Jane, what's the website, Jane? www.jcwfitness.co.uk. Thanks very much. Good luck, Chrissy. <laughs> thank you.